Good morning, Britain. The Metropolitan Police contacts Downing Street over the bring your own booze party. Either end of a bench. Right. Because you were allowed to meet one other person. What? But if you were trying to organise a funeral mm. for a loved one. And how the ministers were bending over back. Date. Yeah. And there's a photograph of me at one end of a two yeah. metre bench. Yep. That my was. But if you read the comments that are coming into mm. the programme this yeah. morning as we discuss this, they are about people who were seeing loved ones yep. who were about to die. Yeah. And could not see them in the way that they would have wanted to, that you would want to with somebody who you knew you were about to lose and couldn't organise funerals for them. Uh, I mean, uh, honestly, single person who was there, yes. I mean, would you criminalise the 40 well, who Well, I suspect what they'll do is they'll criminalise people. Extra people were invited, 60 people didn't go. Yeah. Smart So 60 school. people knew yeah. and yeah. There were, this was the and wrong the, thing And there are memos do. knocking around. How come those people... We heard the Prime Minister on this programme a little bit earlier, saying if you know something like this is going, we're worried about this going on. Not go and tell the police this uh, is happening. He's, I suspect he actually was and hasn't denied. And people cannot invite mm. loved ones mm. to a family yeah. funeral yeah. on an inquiry, um, it, which was an intrigue because normally he says all the rules were followed. Mm. Uh, now he's changed yeah. to it's all yeah. um, subject. Let's just have a listen. Her official job title. I mean, she's obviously heading this inquiry. Yeah. But if if I'd held a big party uh, yeah. in in the garden of my house. Mm. And I got somebody else who, you know, yeah. I work with to investigate as opposed to the police. Is that is that all right? Yeah, I think they were working very, very hard. You know, they needed to have some downtime. And you had Hi, good morning. Well, it's just gone six o'clock. Uh, welcome to the programme. I don't know about you, about you, about all of you here, but my jaw is on the floor. I mean, how much longer is this nonsense going to go on for? The infamous cheese and wine do in, in the garden. Yeah. Um, and I just wonder how much more evidence do we have to present to the Prime Minister to tell him and show him and prove that he's been breaking the rules? The cheese and wine uh, picture that uh, we've all seen of the group in uh, Downing Street had at least a tenuous... You can relax, exercise and play sport. 29 other ah. people. One it was a gathering with of... With their own bottles. 100 people and apparently buffet tables laid out with food. It's one, heck mean, of a, one heck of a good work do, isn't it? Sorry? One heck of a work do. One heck of a work do. Oh, I'm just getting clarification. Sorry, the editor says 100 invited, 40 turned up. My apologies. So mm. when it was one per <clears throat> person allowed to have one other person uh -huh. with them, it was actually one person and 39 other people at the party. I think by any measure, if it was more than one other person, it breached the rules at the time. Should we see what, just before we get into the main story, should we just have a quick look at what Priti Patel was saying would happen to you if you did something like this? Home Secretary, of course. No, Home time. Secretary, absolutely. Uh, this is what she said. I don't know what the penalties will be in this case. What did Boris have to say about this when he was doorstepped uh, yesterday? He laughed a lot. You, isn't it's it, Boris? Hilarious. You have to laugh, don't mm, you, really? Yeah. Especially when people weren't able to hold proper funerals for their loved ones go and see their mothers um, who were dying, locked out of care homes. Uh, it's, it's unbelievable, isn't it? I mean, it's, I had a, look it's a back, shameful I had episode. a look back through my calendar from mm. um, May 2020, and I was, I've got photographs of me and mum in a park. At, I mean, we weren't in any... We just couldn't see each other. Yes. One mm. who you hadn't been able to spend mm. very much time with... Mm in close contact yep. because of the restrictions, perhaps yep. on hospital visiting. Yep. And then you were allowed to invite perhaps a handful of people, mm. 10 people mm. to that funeral. You couldn't bring people back into the home because of the restrictions. Absolutely. And you see an invite going out to 100 people yep. and 40 people attend a party, bring your own booze on the 20th. I really do try and avoid reflex government bashing and reflex prime minister, in this case, but you'll see that I sit back a bit on it. I try not to do it. I, I, I try just, just to comment on, on the evidence and what there is that you can specifically prove. This is such a provable breach and, it, and it, it's so clearly wrong and it's such an insult to everybody who was doing their level best. Sarah Vine, who of course is married to Michael Gove, has written a furious piece mm -hmm. in today's Daily Mail. She said she spent half of lockdown listening to arguments and discussions over the phone about... Ear, ear to the door and she could hear her husband to make the rules work and to apply them. Mm. And then you have an invitation like this going out at number 10.
at yeah. number 10. And of course, families who lost loved ones to COVID have told this programme they are absolutely sickened that up to 100 people were invited to the Bring Your Own Booze party at Downing Street during the first lockdown. Well, we've got witnesses here, and these witnesses are saying that Boris Johnson and his wife Carrie were among around, as we said, about 40 people out of the 100 that were invited there. They were there. Witnesses are saying that on the record. They attended. Boris thinks it's funny. The Metropolitan Police are talking to the Cabinet Office about this event. And I